On today's episode of Watch Jargo, Jake and I have something that all of you that have ever worked in corporate IT or hospitality are probably familiar with, a very expensive coffee maker. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jargo and today I'm here with 100% Jake and an Ergo, I forgot what it is, a Touch XP1. Ergo One Top Milk XP Touch IST. Now it rolls off the tongue. Yes, that's you know exactly what it is now. If you look up this coffee maker, feel free to Google it. It has the intelligent steam option. It's $25,000. It's got a USB port. It's got a USB port. It probably runs Android. And if you uh, don't like driving anywhere, you could just buy this instead of a brand new Toyota Camry. So the, the, <laughs> there are choices to be made in life and your choices can be this coffee maker or a Camry. Now I got this for free. Huge thank you to Bite My Bits. It came from um, Enterprise IT, as you would expect, a big, a, a very large company. I don't know if I can say where it came from, but this was given to him from the surplus. It was going in the trash and it was given to me after that. And today I'm unbelievably excited to tear this thing down and show you guys what's inside. And also, obviously, I came from Enterprise IT. I put in an unlimited amount of years at NetApp, Jake as well. Um, we know these coffee makers well. Every huge company has like five of these because all the employees drink coffee all day and you have to provide your employees with fancy coffee or they're probably gonna quit. So uh, nobody actually likes coffee. We all like cappuccino and it's delicious. We want to drink stuff that tastes good. These coffee makers make it all in one touch. You've got dual bean grinders on this bad boy. This one will be like um, decaf and this one will be regular beans. Dual gigantic grinders inside there. A robot makes the coffee top to bottom. It boils the water. We don't know how this thing works yet, but this appears to be the hot water output. This is the USB port for flashing new software updates. Um, this is the intelligent steam wand. You can see it's got the little steam output thing there and you can select how you want your steam on your coffee. It has dual milk nozzles and it has dual coffee nozzles because you can't mix your um, decaf and your regular beans. It also has multicolor LEDs up inside here to indicate how done or when your coffee's done. Um, it tells you with the light, it'll just have a nice glow when it's not on and it'll like flash when the coffee is finished. This can be adjusted for cup size. It's very nice. I mean, it's, it's built the way you think a $25,000 coffee maker would be. And the answer is well. Now this was in the back of my truck and fell over at like 60 mile an hour. So it did get a little tore up, but hey, that happens. Uh, this is where you clean it out. That should be the main power switch right there. That's off. And when it's in, it's on. This is where it deposits all the used coffee grounds after it makes them for you. And uh, then you throw that away every so often. It usually has an optical sensor in there to tell you when it needs emptied. Or it might just be guessing. It might just use a uh, math. And of course over here is the fridge because you need dual milks. You need uh, a whole milk and a skim milk. So this fridge lets you put in two quarts of milk and there's one straw for each quart with a cap that uh, with a hole in it that screws into the jug of milk. That is pretty much the overview. You can put your cleaning tabs in there and it'll pop up and tell you when you need to run a clean cycle and you put the cleaning tab in and hit the button and it cleans itself and you throw away the output. Water comes in here, uh, it drains there for the front drain uh, where it usually has a catch, I'm missing that. And this is where all the milk and everything connects. That's all just been cut out when they remove the thing. And this is the cord that connects to its 220. And Jake and I are wiring experts. Do not, don't do anything that we're doing. Oh, we're gonna show that. Of course it needed 220 and a twist lock um, and somehow that got converted to this and somehow 220 comes into this. Don't ask any other questions. We're gonna plug it in right now. And if it doesn't explode, I think we're good to go. We talked real nicely with the angry pixies. <laughs> I'm gonna put on gloves and stand back. Yeah, welding gloves would be a good one. I don't have those. <laughs> Should we go shut the breaker off and then turn it on? I don't know, man. <laughs> All right, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> we did it, we shut the breaker off. Jake is heading down to turn it on right now, and we're all standing far enough away that if anything blows up, uh, we'll be okay. I've never actually been worried about anything like this, but we don't know how it's wired in the machine, and we didn't go any deeper to look inside it, so. It's gotta be good. He should've just turned it on. 
It's on? Yeah, I've been immediately tripped, so I guess we're good. Okay. Fridge. Nothing. Okay, machine. It works! Ooh. Ah, red lights. Swiss coffee technology. Man, I really wanted to set this up in the warehouse. This was supposed to be in the Motul Lounge when we built a coffee bar out, but also you have to use these. Like you need to use them like a hundred times a day. It's like an Italian motorcycle. It doesn't like to sit. You cannot let these things sit. And honestly, all the uh, enterprise IT places that have these have service contracts and ours would have to be serviced, I would say every week. And I can't imagine what it costs. It must cost like $10,000 a year to take care of these coffee makers. You know what it'll make? It'll make a hundred, I think 105 cups of coffee an hour. That literally means that like every 45 seconds it can make another complete drink. Wow. It's unbelievable how good this thing is. Ergo, Ergo one. one. Please be Android. All the new ones are Android. Wow. It knows the drawer is open. We must have got the ground. Press button to confirm drawer removal. Oh! We got noises. It's got best sellers, dude. Espresso. Check that out. Green tea, black tea, steamed milk, froth milk. Machine not ready. I thought I broke it, but I guess I didn't. Okay, let's pull some sides off of here while it's running. While it's running over. While it's running. That's great. I need a Phillips for a second here. I'd also love to know what's making all this noise. How cool. Is that the compressor? Not the, is the compressor running? Yeah, that's, it's not running. No. It's not running, that's for sure. Oh, there's an adjustment back here for your milk temp. We strongly recommend not mixing up these two orange extension cords that look exactly the same. One of them's 110 volts, no big deal. One of them's 220, a really big deal. Come on. Do I just keep this thing? It is kind of a cool little What fridge. a cool fridge. For your three monster energy. And you could have a pump that automatically fills containers with whatever you want that's inside it. Hmm. hmm. It's the world's most extra kegerator. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Oh, the pump's in here. Ah. I didn't realize it had its own pumps inside the fridge. It says the fridge must be used with this coffee maker. Okay, uh, if you guys can't tell from this table that's like trying to collapse right now, this thing weighs so much that it's like leaning. Hey, right, look at this. We got W37 check clock. Machine. Yep. Clock. Clock's wrong. W37 check clock. I can hear water boiling because we plugged it back in and it's like creating a little vacuum. So I figured I'd put some water in the machine. Oh, it's coming out of the machine. Okay. Oh no. It's coming out of the, oh no. It's yeah, it's coming out of the machine. I was hoping the boiler would come up to temp and then it would say machine ready and we could push buttons. That's really what I'm betting on here. So to remove your bean hoppers, you go like that, and the bean hoppers are removed. Those are your grinders right there. Uh, the bean hoppers themselves are very cool. When you fill them up, you need to not have the beans spill out. So you have it like that, and then when you push it in, it locks it in, and the beans go into the grinder, which is very cool. Really smart. What a cool surface design. It's definitely worth the Toyota Camry. Yes, it is. Oh, it smells like burning water now. It has a diagram showing that it's different sizes. Is it the grind amount? Oh, are there notches? Yeah, it's got a do Ah, interesting. Okay, this thing will come apart now. Oh, the pump's running. Look at this big old pump. Wow, that thing's a monster. Gosh, that motor's huge. So I did wonder how we were getting actual water into this boiler with no water pressure, but with a water pump, that makes sense. That's cool. All right, so here we go. Should just take off, start blasting the water. In. Oh, there's the leak. 
What, why didn't you guys just fix the leak? Oh, it's a hole in that. In the line? It breeded through or We something. can cut that line and... Re-terminate it? Yeah. Okay, that seems easy. Oh, that's a fire. <laughs> oh, it was, the water was jumping the terminals on that motor back there. Did you see it? Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw, I got closer. Oh, my instincts man. are great. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it, bro. You nailed it. All right, let's, uh, let's unplug this now. We're done with this. <laughs> oh, fire! Cool! Yeah, I love that! Okay, no more power, unfortunately. It smells like burning electronics, that's for sure. Ozone. That's crazy. Okay, water solenoid. Wow, this is cool. Put your hand in there, it's super cold. Hmm. <laughs> you know, it could, it could just feed it to me. It could just... Perfect. Ah, proof for the viewers. 76 out here. 86 out here, actually. Yeah. 40 in there already. Wait, are you? <laughs> I hope it's empty. No. Nope. Gross. <laughs> All right, where's the other end? We'll I'm gonna drink back. it. <laughs> oh, the... Are you gonna try this? Where's the other I end? Think, I think you need the electric pump to pull it off. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna pull back here. So there's milk two and milk one. Okay, Gross. so it's not you, that one. You are a crazy person. This probably has sanitizer water in it. Sweet. Well, the fridge works, the coffee maker, we have fully given up on at this point because we did, you know, start a small fire and uh, luckily get it shut down fast enough. So now let's tear this thing down and show you how it works. To open the front of it, you just swing it off to the side here and you can see these are all the hoses to feed in the milk and the coffee grounds. This one should be hot water directly from the boiler and this is where you can see the entire mechanism moving up and down. These are the steam lines. I don't know what that does. One of them comes up here. It must be a vent or something like that, but maybe it vents steam back inside the machine. I'm not quite sure what that does, but anyway, intelligence steams over here. This is what I would expect to be hot water. And these are all the coffee and milk feeders. Once you open up this, you can see all the rest of the magic. This is what compresses the coffee grounds and like actually brews it from what I can see. I know that the pods that are brewed full of coffee um, they fall out of here into this tray. So this is where all the grindings go. And uh, also this chute here is where the cleaning tablets go. They fall down there. So I'm not quite sure where the grinders put their coffee, but somehow it all ends up right here, all the grounds, which means this motor runs this compressing piston here that must squeeze the little grounds into its pellet that gets dropped into the bottom. These are your two grinders. You can see they're 1390 or 1690 RPM. 230 volt grinders, they are absolute monsters. And in the back, of course, we have the boilers and the water pump and all the solenoids for the water train. So uh, now let's start tearing this thing apart and show you guys what's actually going on, other than it leaking a bunch of water and trying to start fires for us. We've got it unhooked. It's time to actually start tearing this thing down. We'll start by tearing the back panel off. They all just lift off, two screws on top, and boom. That thing was working. It was boiling some water. You can feel it's getting a little warm. I don't want to touch it because its insulation is apparently just falling apart. But uh, yeah, some kind of dual boiler system. Pressure gauges on each one. Super nice tubing. I mean, this, this thing is so fancy. It's unbelievable. Air solenoid, steam solenoid, left steam solenoid, right steam solenoid. Everything's really well labeled. It's those nice, like, what, I think they call those DIN connectors on those? You can make a self-heating thermos. <laughs> it's just, uh, you have to carry like a 220 volt extension cord with you. <laughs> you're like, man, my coffee stays hot all day. All right, so then this comes off after that. I pulled the screws out of that. Beans! What are, are these just capacitors? They are, aren't they? 14 microfarad. Man, all right, now we figured out what these do too. Okay, there's random screws in there. Mm. It's a remote bean selection system. Not really bean selection, it's probably the size of the grind or the amount. You know me, you always know. on my grind. Always on the grind. Oh, the chute's broken off of this one. Oh, maybe that's why they had to scrap it. No chute. <laughs> I see, I see. 
that nice food grade tubing. This is where everything must drain, I see. All of this drains down to the bottom. So it must all pour into there and then it goes down. Mm. This entire chassis is welded. I don't even know where to start taking it apart. So to remove the door on your Ergo one, you take your handy dandy wire cutters. I think this was in the service manual. We just ended up uh, taking a quick look at that and I'm pretty sure it said to do just this. All these hoses are crazy brittle. These wire cutters are crazy dull and they can barely cut wire these days. And somehow they're just cutting this with no issue. All right, there we got all the tubing unhooked. And now we're gonna drop the door off of here once we get the cables that run the display unhooked. All right. Working on this is fun because you get covered in coffee grounds as you go. Like literally everything in there is just full of coffee grounds. So it looks like one of these cables is actually USB, which is pretty funny. I think it's that one right there. That one's probably USB. And uh, one of these is the touchscreen, that one. And one of them is the iSteam. Or two of them go to the iSteam, these two. These two go to the iSteam. All right, well, now we know how the front of the door works. Not too much to it. So this one screw here is the hinge that should drop this whole assembly, and it does. Ah. And now we need to remove another tube. This one is like water to the grounds dispenser. Oh, there's dual water to the grounds dispenser. So one of these must be press output. I don't know, but it seems like this is where all the magic with the coffee happens. It has a big piston that compresses it, and then it comes back up and it has this thing that scrapes the top off of it and dumps the grounds. And mm. the other side dumps out the finished part. It must all be pressed coffee. This must do all of the magic right here. These motors are custom. Swiss Ergo. Cool. Look at that giant screw in there. It must have some crazy torque coming out of that gearbox. 150 watt at 220 volts is insane for sure. Like those grinders have to get after it. Uh, now we pull this big old cover out that exposes everything inside the machine. And now you can see our water pump, the thing that was catching on fire, which was this motor or pump right there. Can't quite tell what it is. And the solenoid train for the water. So we're just gonna keep ripping stuff out of here. And if we can get all this off, I think we've got some good access to the rest of the machine. So I think we can pull the grinders out too. Who's actually holding these in? Oh, nothing, gravity. They're being held in with gravity. That's an interesting way to hold those in. Well, they, they weigh enough. They do weigh a ton, <laughs> I, I gotta give it to them. They weigh a lot. Oh, the grinders have start caps. Oh, uh, I bet that's a start cap for the motor. I bet it is. I've never seen a coffee grinder with a start cap. That's, that's a new one for me. I don't know, maybe it's not for the rest of the world, but that's uh, I mean, this thing could be an air conditioner for your house with the energy it pulls probably. I like how I'm not tight those were. I mean, yeah, they, I mean, they just time. fall out, no big deal. They're not that critical, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so your grinder core spine level adjustment just flops out of there, and then you can lift the grinders straight up. It looks like they literally are not held in by anything. They're just sitting on big rubber dampers. Look at that. It must weigh five pounds or something. It's not crazy, but it's a, it's a hefty motor, I'll tell you that. So. Did you hear it hit the ground? It hits the ground with a thud, man. We're gonna drop it for you guys. <laughs> I keep looking at this thing and saying, wow, it is actually that fancy that it's kind of worth the money. But look at this giant water solenoid distribution block. That is so unbelievably fancy. Like that is a machined water distribution block and it brings the water straight out of the boiler into it. How crazy is that? This must be a thermocouple. So if you're doing DIY hydroponics, you can get one of these out of the trash. <laughs> yeah. This is everything you need. Everything, you, all the solenoids you need to distribute your water to everywhere you need. So we've got everything hooked up so you guys can actually take a look inside here at the control boards. This is all the power 
and this is all the data. And this right here tells the uh, you know the actual logic board how to control the power supply. So uh, main power in is right there. It's labeled line. And then this is high voltage transformer, which is that monstrous transformer winding right there. It weighs a ton. And this is a low voltage transform, which we don't know what the voltage is, but I'm assuming it's probably 24 volts, possibly 12, and uh, a couple of relays to turn on and off a few different things. So that's probably the grinder control on those relays. You can see left grinder, right grinder, and those obviously go directly across the line. Not sure how they're being put across the line, but they definitely do. Oh, there's LEDs, status lights for each one, left grinder, right grinder, pump, and this is that giant water pump down on the bottom, and this is coffee steamer, which I would assume means the boiler, since the intelligent steamer had some tiny little power wires going to it. So that's the entire overview of the power supply board. And then here is the logic board. Anything on here that matters? One of these, probably that guy right there, is the actual processor for the whole machine. Key, iSteam, ELT for iSteam, you got all the outputs here. Pressure transducer, power pressure, keyboard, coin checker, that's an interesting one. Hmm. Touch screen, that's the USB port as I thought. So it just runs straight to this board. There's all your error codes. Upper motor, lower motor. So these were for the uh, coffee press. 24 volt input. So I do think the whole machine runs on 24 volts. Ah, and that big wide one was the LEDs on the front panel there. So there's light. And uh, we pretty much got it all unhooked. Hydraulic module, and there's fridge data right there. Well, that's it. That's a basically complete overview of this coffee maker. And so much of this is welded but I think we're just gonna throw it in the scrap pile now. It's heading straight to recycling. Uh, that giant boiler is pretty in there. Off it goes. That's tearing down a $25,000 coffee maker. It was built in 2015 too, it's not even that old. Hmm. There are labels for when like some of these parts were built in 2015, so you know it's pretty new. Crazy. Probably just because this uh, chute broke off the other grinder right there. Well, I imagine the water leaks are probably a part of it. Yeah, the water leaks are pretty crazy for sure. It probably did what it did for us to someone else and they went, nope. Nope, trash can. This entire hose here, the side of it's gone. So that might have been one of the main issues. Uh, either way, this was never going back into service and uh, we don't have a real use case for it. And neither does anyone else really because they just buy new ones that are under service contracts. Well, Jake, we did a thing. We've torn apart a coffee maker worth more than most used cars. And um, at the end of the day, we learned a little bit about intelligent or robotic coffee makers. And we did not burn the house down. I think that's the real takeaway from this video. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. I can't wait to see the comments on this one. Don't ask. And yes, of course, we did keep the cord. Uh, all the metals going to the recycling. And we did decide to throw away the pump and the grinders and all of that stuff because I realized they're all 220 and 220 is not as accessible here in the US as it is in Europe. You guys have 220 everywhere over there. Here in the US, obviously 110 is the standard for all this stuff. And when I wanna hook up a little water pump, I probably don't wanna to have to go get a 220 circuit. I only have one because of my servers that run on it and we had to drag a cord all the way up from the basement. So. That is it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing some crazy industrial coffee making action. I found out, I read the, uh, the brochure or the PDF about it. It actually makes 220 cups an hour if you need to. It depends on what you're making. But 220 cups an hour, crazy. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchchair.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time and we put the fridge all back together and jake's taking it home he's gonna make a cool shop fridge for dispensing beverages so it'll have uh, those electronic pumps that will grab whatever you want out of the fridge and pump it into something yep i just realized it's gonna be super slow through those tiny tubes pretty slow it's pretty slow through those tubes but you know what it, it makes those uh coffees really fast so i do know that it's a nice flow of milk when those pumps are on it works. I do love a nice smoke flow. Yeah. Now, this whole system did come with 
this coffee grinder that I'm sure works. It's done. It does sound functional. It's done grind. Oh, oh, okay. So we gotta. It smells so good. Where does it come out? What do you do now? Wow, that's a full on timer. So you, you have this timer. You grind your coffee based on time? I have no idea. This is a Mazer. So confused. All I know is that it must be very expensive. What's this do? It seems like this is how you open it. Oh, okay, so every time you advance this, it puts another, another like perfect set of grounds down every time you advance it. It's cleaning itself out. That's pretty sweet. That is cool. I don't know what you do with this, but. <laughs> You grind coffee. Yeah, you sure do. And this is the adjustment. Ah! Ah! So just like the other one with that big wheel for adjustment, this one you turn this, and you have fine and coarse. Pretty cool, man. I mean, I guess these, these would go in like the normal... Yeah, this is for like machine. a fancy coffee shop. I mean, you can also just put these in your normal little light. It's very fine. KitchenAid coffee maker. Yeah, yeah, you can just use this at home and be a boss. Some beans are falling in as I do it. Yeah, I grind my own coffee. Yep, I'm fancy. Oh yeah, stick your finger in there. No, I'm not, I'm not putting it all the way in there. Okay. Yeah, listen to those beans. Runtime not to exceed 30 minutes at any one hour. 